A fog rolling across the dunes greets our morning flight, confirming we are fast approaching the west coast of Namibia. The ocean fog, created by cold offshore currents, provides most of the moisture in a land that averages less than half an inch of rain annually. The dunes here, reshaped by fierce coastal winds, are flatter and softer, often taking on the appearance of a chocolate milk version of nearby ocean waves. Flying down this isolated barren edge of the African continent, where the dunes melt into the Atlantic. We pass over the old bones of mining camps and look down on the carcasses of long ago shipwrecks that give meaning to the name the Skeleton Coast. It is no wonder the Bushmen used to call this area the land God made in anger. However, when we land and drive to the Cape Cross fur seal colony and breathe in the pungent odor of 100,000 marine mammals, only then do we fully comprehend how alive the Skeleton Coast is. Cape Cross is the largest breeding colony of fur seals on the planet. Here they nurse, give birth, fight, and mate. The big bull males coming on shore around October of every year to stake out their territory and claim their harems, which can range in size from five to 65 females. It's a tough, exhausted job, claiming, protecting, and satisfying that many females, like spring break for fur seals during this time, probably explaining why they only had the energy to do this once a year. Back on the plane for our final flights, we once again look down on a strange phenomenon called fairy circles, spots where vegetation doesn't grow and the sandy soil lies exposed. Red polka dots and seas of brown and green and orange. They look like a scene from the movie Holes, or maybe large scale paintings by aliens in the style of Victor Vassarelli, the optical illusion artist. Nobody can explain why the barren patches always make a circle, and no scientist has proven why nothing grows there. Fairy Circles remains both the perfect name and explanation.